Hi, this is Jim Shokum, host of Web Comics Reviews and Interviews. Today was the complete business checklist. So sit back, relax, and let the Geek Fest begin. One of the things you have to do when you set up your business, you have to realize that there's a huge number of steps in order to basically go through in order to make sure you're actually setting up your business the right way. Yeah, a lot of people are going, what does this have to do with running a comic? Well, reality is that if you're running your comic and you want to make much money from it, you're going to have to run it as an actual business. Sure, it's going to be an artistic endeavor, you're going to have a lot of fun with it, and yeah, you're going to be able to do a lot of art. But the bottom line is that you're going to have to run it as an actual business. You're going to have to go through and fill out all the paperwork. You're going to have to go through some ridiculous hoops. And the bottom line is, you're going to have to do a lot of not fun things in order to actually be a successful comic. But that's part of actually running a successful comic. If you don't want to run through these hoops, you know, sure, that's fine. You can do that too. You can go through create your comic, throw it up on a web comic space somewhere, maybe throw it at a print on demand situation later on, and hey, you'll be golden. That's fine. But you're not going to be able to get any actual money from it. That is, you're not going after it in an organized manner. And because you're not going at it in an organized manner, well, you're not going to be able to adjust things as you need to. You're just simply going to be throwing things and hoping something sticks. And for running a business, that's just not the world's greatest way to do it. You need a plan. You need to make sure all of your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed. You need to make sure absolutely that every piece of paperwork that you need to run a business has been filled out. Obviously, you're going to be stopping by a local chamber of commerce to help. I mean, straight up. If you can't find a chamber of commerce, then yeah, this might be the time you want to check into a lawyer, specifically when dealing in business law, because there's a lot of things that you need to do in order to basically create whatever it is you're going to be creating. However, we are going to help you go through the extreme basics. Again, I'm going to emphasize real quick before I get hardcore into this, that Every area is different in terms of how they set the business and what hoops you have to go through. You need to remember that. That's why I keep going. You want, need to go to the Chamber of Commerce or some sort of business lawyer. You need somebody on your side who actually knows what's going on, how to help you set up things. If you can pull that trick off, hey, that is the biggest start you're going to be able to get going on. The rest of it, yeah, it's going to be boring, it's going to be irritating, it's going to be annoying. But every business owner has gone through this, and it's now your turn to go through the same thing. Yeah, it's a certain degree of hazing, and it's obnoxious. But if you're trying to actually make something out of your comic more than just simply, and I did this thing, then these are things you're going to have to do. With that in mind, yeah, this is probably going to be the most dry podcast we've ever done. It's going to be boring, it's going to be annoying, and it's not exactly going to be ultra exciting. But it is nonetheless extremely important for you to at least consider what I'm talking about here. Straight up, if you just simply want to do a comic book, sell it to a couple of friends, maybe some credit at convention, fine. Just basically create your script, have some art done, maybe throw it up on a webcomic page, maybe throw it up to a print-on-demand site. And that's all you need to do. But if you're actually serious about doing something with it, if you're trying to do a Kickstarter, if you're trying to pay the rent, if you're actually trying to become a successful artist on some level, well, this is where you need to start. So bear with me. It's not going to be incredibly exciting, but it is going to be worthwhile. Okay? Obviously, we're going to have to start at your concept. This is going to be a little bit more than you just sitting down and basically deciding this is what we're doing. You're also going to have to set up a logo, and you're also going to have to set up some sort of business plan and marketing plan. We'll get to those a little bit later. I mean, those are great to do, but like I said, we'll, there's going to be a lot of things you're going to be putting an opinion in. But for now, just come up with the extremely basic concept. If you can, come up with a 30-second elevator pitch. This is straight up, just a real brief, this is what we're doing, this is what we're planning to do, and this is what you're going to basically be reading. It doesn't have to be ultra detailed. It doesn't have to be really fast. I mean, I know a lot of people are going to be going, how fast can I get through this? And they're going to go, well, something along the lines, this is my comic, I bet you can listen to me, and I bet you're going to figure it out really, really quick, don't you? Yeah, that's going to be really annoying. You know, just straight up. Go through, do a relatively paced, just like I'm doing now, level where you're basically describing what's going on in your comic. For example, this would probably be the 30-second elevator pitch for a brass ring. And if you really want to, go ahead and time me on this, just for your own peace of mind. 
Brass Ring is about a group of replacement heroes. Basically, way back when, there was a piece of balance set up between heroes and the villains where basically a third party would keep track of secrets. If anything bad happened, well, those secrets would be released well to that particular hero or villain. However, a gangster found out about the situation and found out a way to disperse all of the hero's secrets. Because of this, a lot of the heroes have disbanded and gone elsewhere, and a new band has to come in. This is their story. Note that I've given you all the necessary details relative to the comic. You know, I've given you the basic setup, the press up, and the hook. You know, you've got the situation where you've got these groups of heroes and these groups of villains, and they've been able to maintain some sort of peace between each other by going to a third party who keeps all their secrets. That's sort of the basic premise. The hook is that somebody's actually figured out where all these secrets are and has actually released them, causing a lot of the heroes to simply just disappear and vanish. You know, they've got to figure out where all their secrets have gone to, and until they do, they're pretty much going to be useless, especially considering what some of those secrets are. Sure, some of them are going to be really stupid, really basic, like, you know, I clip my toenails in front of the television. But a lot of these are also going to be a lot more devastating. They're going to be stuff like blackmail level situations. Stuff like who slept with who. What kind of government secrets the person has. If the person is in witness protection agency. That sort of thing. That's the hook. Then you then have the basic setup. Which is that, well, in order to basically cover this, you're bringing an entirely new group of heroes. And and comes down to it, it doesn't get more basic than that. Right now, I don't need names, I don't need details of what the characters and the heroes' names and the city name and all the various details. I don't need to know the level of technology and all that. I just need to know the premise, the hook, and basically the setup. That's all you need. 30 seconds. It's going to go by fast because, trust me, it just did. But if you can get used to that and actually set all the information up, hey, you're one step ahead of the game right off the bat. And that's not a bad way to be. Past that, here's where you're also going to need to do a little bit of research. You're going to basically need to figure out the best place to have your website at. You're going to have to figure out if you're going to design it or if you're going to have it designed. And you also need to look at things like merchanting, sorry, marketing and merchandising links. Merchandise links are pretty obvious. This is obviously where you're going to end up selling your merchandise from. Or for that matter, importing it from and then selling it yourself. However you want to do it, the bottom line is you're going to need to basically have some way of having some actual merchandise from the get-go. I don't care if it's something as stupid as a t-shirt and a cap. That's fine. All you need to do is have the research done at this particular point. But you also need to consider marketing stuff. This means not only your social media, it also means any kind of partners you can set up by or alliances. It also means advertising straight up. Like I said, at this point, just do the research on it. Don't worry too much about actually implementing it. You're just simply going to overwhelm yourself if you get too crazy too quick. So for now, just basically come up with your elevator pitch. Try to do some research into some merchandising stuff and definitely look up some marketing links. But that's just before you actually get going. When you actually get going, things get a little bit crazy. What you're now going to have to do is sit down and actually figure out what your business plan is, what your marketing plan is, and actually start building these up. For most people, the business plan is something they'll set up for investors. And because of that, it becomes a very detailed document. I mean, you're basically looking at stuff like who your competitors are, how much money you're planning on making, what kind of expenses you're planning on going out, so on and so forth. It is a ridiculously detailed document that has the first five years and so forth for that particular business. Don't stress it. You don't have to do that. Your business plan is just basically looking at what kind of stuff you're planning on doing, what kind of merchandise you're planning on selling, how you're actually planning on printing your comic book at some point, and basically anything else relative specifically to the running of the business. You know, if you're going to have an artist and a um, writer, for example, if you have some sort of marketing team, all of this needs to be allowed just so you have a general idea of what you're going to be doing for your business. While it's advisable you come up with some sort of five-year plan at absolute minimum, it's not something you really have to worry about. You just need the ultra basics. You need to know what your crew is. You need to know how often you're going to be updating this comic or if you're basically trying to compile it into an actual book. You know, if you're going to basically be selling any kind of merchandise, definitely 
do that. And if you're planning to go to conventions, try to allow for that in there as well. Basically, what you're looking at is anything you're planning to do in terms of setting up the business itself and then how you're planning to do that business later on. Your marketing plan is somewhat similar but in terms of concept, but you're looking specifically at how you're planning to market your business. That is, what's your social media plan? What, are you going to be doing a lot of interviews? Are you going to be having a YouTube channel? You know, what exactly is it? How are you exactly marketing your particular comic? And on top of that, you also need to basically worry about the concept of how you're going to be marketing it. To a certain degree, this is where you need to worry about things like demographics. That is, who is your audience? With Brass Ring, yeah, I'm looking at a younger crowd, but because I've also got a couple of interesting older characters in there, I can actually go to that crowd as well. Obviously, I'm not really thinking about traditionals because a gay character is definitely going to be part of the main group and is actually going to be one of the ancestral characters. That is, I'm actually going to have a character who's going to come in from a previous group to basically mentor the current group. And I figure, hey, let's go gay. Um, that's actually going to be part of your marketing plan because you actually need to keep in mind that those extra segments you can actually market to, yeah, I know it's cynical, and sometimes it's something you need to consider, but occasionally you definitely need to worry about if your characters have something special about them that are going to allow you to market to a different group. If you have an autistic character, you can basically go to anybody who's autistic. You know, the various autistic websites and all that that are always looking for those autistic characters. Hey, all of a sudden, you've got a character that actually qualifies for that, so you can actually market to that group. So yeah, I definitely understand how this can be seen as a little bit on the cynical side, but as you followed from a lot of other podcasts I've done, you shouldn't be doing diversity or any form of inclusion just for the sake of your marketing. You need to do something that's organic to that particular comic. Once you've actually figured out who your characters are, then you can actually figure out to which groups those characters appeal to. And that can actually be somewhat fun in and of itself. What I'm basically looking at here is don't create characters specifically for marketing. Rather, create your marketing around the characters you have. You're going to find that your marketing plan is going to be a lot stronger, a lot more viable, and it's not going to come off if you just did this just for the sake of marketing, which is always probably the wrong way to go. So have a little bit of fun with it. Also, this is a phase that you need to get used to tracking your expenses. You know, all those really nifty receipts you pack up for everything, you know, for art supplies, for website design, this, that, and the other thing. You need to track those receipts. You need to figure out exactly what your expense reports are going to look like, and this is going to allow you to do a lot of weird stuff later on. First off, the cool thing is that expenses come out are actually a tax deduction. Because of that, you definitely want to keep track of everything you're doing. If you have equipment, hey, Keep track of when you first bought it because you're going to be allowing for depre dep sorry, you're going to allow for depreciated value later on. You know, it's just straight up. You're going to find out real quick that every expense that you put into your business, you need to track it, and it's going to be a good thing to have tracked later on. Because trust me, you're going to want to sit down with a tax accountant at some point and go over what's a legitimate business expense and which isn't, and you're going to find that a lot of stuff that you thought that you've never had to really worry about. Hey, all of a sudden it becomes a legitimate business expense and something worth worrying about. So definitely at this stage of the game, learn to track those expenses. Keep those receipts. If you can, keep a business uh, business account that's separate from your personal account just for that. And we'll get back into that in just a moment because there actually is a really great easy way to set that up. But the advantage of having that business account is that means that all the expenses relative to the business are going to be tracked somewhere by someone and they're going to be easy to keep separate from yours. I mean, straight up, if they're part of your account, you're going to have to basically weed out what your expenses are versus another and there's going to be some things you just do not want to show an accountant. On the other hand, if you have it set up as a business account, well... All that separated right off the get-go, your accountant doesn't have to worry about separating out your stuff and probably running into something a little bit on the embarrassing side. And the bottom line is, it's nice and clean. So if you can, set up your business plan. Figure out how your business is going to work. Set up your marketing plan. Basically figure out how you're going to market this thing and start tracking expenses. Okay? Okay, now you're nice and organized. Now we get to start sending you through the actual hoops. This is where you start figuring out what all the paperwork that applies to it. If you can get somebody to help you that's actually done this before, 
excellent. This is why I suggest heavily, and I will suggest, keep suggesting it over and over again, that you check out the local Chamber of Commerce. You've got lots of people that have done this, that are willing to do this to help other people, and to some degree, some of these people actually have some fun with this. It's just sort of fun to see, for them, how new businesses create and how they can help them. You know, they like setting up, they like actually mentoring people. It's just something they like to do, and that's something you need to take advantage of. And I'll be straight up. If you're running a minority business or a female business, if you're busy, yeah, straight up. If you're a minority or a woman and you're worried about going into business, then hey, odds are you're going to be able to find a mentor that's going to be able to help you that's keyed specifically to that. You'd be surprised how many minorities there are in business and are willing to help other minorities help up. You'd be surprised how many women who are willing to do the exact same thing to their sisters. I mean, it's just something that needs to be taken advantage of. And if you're worried about going into it as a business, hey, they'll take care of you. You know, they'll be take you out to lunch, have a couple of drinks, maybe, depending on what kind of people you you are, because not everybody likes drinking. So you know, and basically get you to relax. And then once you're nice and relaxed, they hit you with the bad stuff. This is that bad stuff. When you start looking at your paperwork, a lot of it's going to be from a much basic. What I suggest is starting with your doing business as statement, aka your fictitious business name. What this basically means is you're going to be trying to set up a business, but not under your name. What's cool about this, and the major reason you want to do it, is first off, make sure that your comic is going to actually have a unique name. You don't have to do something like, say, Two Sparrows Productions, you know, or Hanami Studios. You don't have to do any of that kind of thing. It's just straight up. You can't actually do straight comic. So keep that in mind. But what this is going to allow you to do is remember how I said it cool it was cool to have a business account? Well, once your business once your DVA has actually gone through, and sometimes places for like California it's like four weeks well, once it's gone through, you can actually take it to a bank and actually start going through the process of setting up a business account. You're also going to want to set up a tax ID number as well as a business license. Business license, again, is pretty much local, but the tax ID is going to be going through pretty much however your country happens to do taxes. The important part about that is that by setting up a tax ID, it allows you to do business and to actually accept basically doing decent amounts of business. Read, if you're just a single individual, single proprietor, and you're trying to do straight business, well, it's good. It's not necessarily incredibly bad, but you're not going to be able to file business taxes all that successfully. By actually going through the steps of setting it up as a business with a tax ID, well, at that point, you're actually starting to set yourself up as a business, and that means you're going to be treated slightly different under tax laws. Again, you're going to have to ask an accountant specifics. I'm Chris trying to keep it nice and basic here. Business license will allow you to do business in the first place. There are certain types of businesses, granted, that don't have to set up a business license, but make sure that you actually are going through the steps and actually making sure that that applies to you. I mean, straight up, you don't want to be in a situation where you're going on a couple of months later down the road and you're actually trying to get things, big things done and all of a sudden somebody wants to see your business license and you can't do it because you don't have one. This is what we call bad juju. Don't do it. Make sure that all of your paperwork has been taken care of. So, and while you're at it, also try to get your URL at this stage. Yeah, there's going to be a little bit of paperwork there as well, even if it basically is just signing up on a particular server site. But the bottom line is, this is going to have to be something you do. It's minor league. It basically allows you to set up your branding a lot easier. And, you know... Even if you're not planning on doing your website right off the bat, nonetheless, having your URL as quickly as possible to make sure that you get it and nobody else does. I mean, I know it sounds sort of silly when you especially if you think that your name is nice and unique, but sometimes competing businesses do tend to basically get the same URL. Consider McDonald's, for example. It's not just the big chain everybody thinks of. It's actually small businesses all over the place. Because that McDonald's is a very sought-after site, and not just by the obvious. You know, and sometimes you're going to find that even as unique as you think it is, somebody else may have actually thought of it first. 
Trust me, uh, just look up, try to figure out how many ways you can get away with doing two sparrows. You know, I thought it was nice and unique and found out that it wasn't. Weird, huh? So, definitely, when you basically start going to the paperwork stages, this is where you need to basically start looking at your fictitious business name statements or your DBAs. You need to get your tax number, you need your business license, and definitely, definitely get your URL, even if you don't plan on doing a website right off the bat. It's cons all this is going to save you so much headache and frustration later on. Oh, and before I forget, you also need to look into a thing called the li Limited Liability Corporation and setting one up. Yeah, I know it's going to be annoying and it's going to be bothersome, and trust me, if you thought the other stuff was annoying, this is going to top all that. But the cool thing about an LLC, the Limited Liability Corporation, is that it allows you a thing called basically a veil. That is, it allows you certain protections under law especially if you happen to get sued. What this means is that instead of you getting sued, your business gets sued. So if something bad happens to your business, it may not happen to you. It also means things like you don't have to disclose everything. It does mean that you are going to have to set up some sort of board. And you possibly are going to have to look at things like investors eventually. But straight up, if you actually are hardcore about setting this up as a business, please look into an LLC as quickly as possible. Again, if you're going to a mentor, they're going to point out all the advantages of setting one up, and you definitely want to set one up if you possibly can. It's just really nice to have that kind of insurance backing you. It's simple, it sounds ridiculous, but trust me, it's definitely worth setting up if you're trying to basically do some sort of actual business. And by actual business, I mean more than just a couple of comic books here and there. If you're trying to sell tens of thousands eventually down the road, this is definitely where you go. If you're trying to actually make some money on your comic, and you don't want to worry too much about getting sued, this will help put your mind at ease somewhat. So definitely check out an LLC while you're out checking out all the rest of this stuff. Remember how I said you could hold off on doing your actual website? Well, now's where you actually have to worry about it. The thing you have to keep in mind is that in this day and age, you need some sort of website. I don't care if you simply happen to be using space somewhere else or if you happen to have your own complete website. The bottom line is you need somewhere to basically set shop up. I, again, there's a lot of options for this, but don't worry too much about the actual if you happen to go through GoDaddy or the Duck Web comic. Obviously, if you're doing a webcomic, I heavily suggest the Duck webcomic. They're great guys. They're willing to help you out, and it allows you to set up a lot of weirdness. Plus, you don't have to worry about a lot of the stuff you would with a regular website. Nonetheless, this is where you get to start setting up your website, and it's extremely important to do so. What you have to worry about right now is making sure it's nice and organized. I mean, straight up. Make sure that everything is exactly where it needs to be. You have links links page. You have your comic, that's going to have its own page. You know, your About Us, all of your merchandise, all of that should have its own little pages. All this needs to be set up nice and clean. You know, just make sure it's nice and well organized, you can find everything and you can actually do it. You'll notice that whenever I do a review of a comic, I always make sure that the web design is part of that. Pay attention to that. There's some really great sites out there, and then there's some really mediocre sites. One of the reasons I'm suggesting the Duck webcomic is because they happen to do a really decent job of allowing you to set up a webcomic with a lot of extra pages attached to that. This is opposed to, say, something like Tapa or Webtoon, which they allow you to set that stuff up, but it just doesn't look all that great, you know? So definitely, just figure out where you can set your web page up, and if you have to do it yourself, so be it. You know, there's a lot of really great web designers out there that you can actually pay for or that actually are free. I think the big one right now is Wix, but, you know, do you. Whatever you feel comfortable with, just do it. Just make sure that when you do set up, you've got something that's nice and organized and looks nice and clean. Make sure that you, whenever you do have links, that they're obvious and that they work. That's a two for there. You know, if you're going to have all these really cool places where you click on, you go there, make sure they're pretty obvious, even if it's just something as simple as either they're a different color than the surrounding area. Also, make sure that they work. I mean, just every so once in a while, go through and check the links and make sure all the links on your page work. It sounds minor, it sounds annoying, but 
nothing aggravates a potential customer when much as going to a website and finding out that one of those links that looked really, really cool doesn't work. Just trust me. You want happy customers, you want links that work. Just, just go pretty much hand in hand. Also, you're going to have to debate some sort of blog. Yeah, it's just straight up. It's minor league. It's basically going to be letting people know about events coming up at the very least. At the very most, it's your thoughts. And at the very, very most, you actually get to have some fun with it. So when you start coming up with your website, Make sure that it's clean and make sure that it's organized. Please make sure that it's clean and organized. People like me love those kind of things. Make sure that your links are obvious and they work. And of course, just basically make sure that everything looks decent. You know, you don't want to basically flood it with ads. You don't want to get too crazy with links all over the place. That's what I sort of mean by clean. It has to look you know, you ever notice the difference between somebody's room when he goes into and it's nice and clean versus and it's organized and you can find everything pretty much really really quick versus somebody who's got like pizza boxes all over the place or glasses and dishes all over and dirty clothes and you have to wade through all this stuff which one of those two would you prefer to deal with please tell me it was the cleaner one please please tell me please but you know the bottom line is you're going to basically have to worry about the thing called search engine optimization and you might as well start now Search engine optimization, basically what search engines go through, they like things that are nice, neat, and organized. In fact, that's sort of why I'm telling you to basically put everything on its own page. The more organized you can make it look, the cleaner you can make it look, the neater you can make it look, the more the search engines are going to love you, and this love will actually be expressed in making you a lot easier to find when somebody looks for the general type of comic you are. So, just something to consider. In fact, let's talk about search engine optimization. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of people go through, you need to do worry about SEO. SEO is, well, search engine optimization. There's three things to help your search engine optimization that you need to worry about. First off, like I keep reiterating, keep it clean. They like stuff that's clean and organized. You can do that for them. They love you. Two, make yourself look relevant. This just means you need to basically post your link all over the place and hope people charge into your site. All the relevance me means in this situation is twofold. One, that you have a lot of hits, and two, that you actually are basically what people are looking for and you have no problem saying that. If both of those match out, then hey, you're good to go. This is sort of why you don't put like 27 zillion tags. At that point, the search engine is going to go, seriously, what are you trying to pull off here? No, this is not what we're looking for. Next, you know, you want a couple of tags that basically express who exactly it is you're doing. You know, going with Brass Ring. Superhero, comic, detective, gangster, and maybe three or four other tags. And hey, I'm good to go. Yeah, I know, it's ultra generic and all that, but the bottom line is, I'm not trying to get too crazy with the tags, because again, if I put too many, search engine is going to go next. If I put too few, same basic situation, you know? It's sort of like going to an audition for singing. You want a situation that's going to knock it out of the park, and you're not going to be able to do that if you hit them with a 50-minute operetta. Conversely, if you hit them with a 5-second opera, you know, 5-second noise blast, that ain't going to impress them either. You want something that's maybe a couple of minutes. The same is going to apply when you talk, looking at your description for a search engine optimization. You want something that's brief, you want something that's quick, and you want to keep the keywords to a minimum. But you don't want to get too minimal, and you don't want to get too crazy. You need to find that nice balance right in the middle. Find that, and you're golden. Also, seriously debate a blog. Blog gives the search engine something to actually chomp on. They see it, they like it, great. Also, when you post your images, do what's called an alt tag. It's just basically really great because it basically sets the description for that particular image. Search engines love that kind of thing. Anything that basically helps them classify your site, allows you to put your site somewhere and as many places as absolutely possible, search engines love. And the more love you get from a search engine, the better you are in the rankings. 
So, and you want to be in the rankings, right? So, make sure the search engines do their best to love you as they possibly can. Alt tags rock. If you don't know what an alt tag is, check with a web designer. And, of course, make sure that you basically submit to other sites. We'll get a little bit more into this, but basically this means your top 10 sites, your top 100 sites. You know, if you've got certain sites that are specifically geared towards the kind of heroes and villains you've got, hey, submit to those sites too. You know, anywhere you can submit your site legitimately is going to do nothing but help you in the long run. This, of course, also means that you need to worry about social media yet again. Again, the more social media you've got, the more the search engines can track your site, and, well, hey, they like that kind of thing. And you remember what I kids said about they love and how they express it? Yeah. So definitely, when it comes to your SEO, try to basically make sure all, you, all your subscriptions are hitting that sweet spot. They're not too long, they're not too short, they're right there. Also, make sure that you submit to other sites that are applicable and you have some sort of social media. And also, remember blogs and alt tags. These are really great little things. All right, so let's backtrack a little bit and exact, talk about exactly what you should go on to your blog. I'm going to keep bringing it up and it might actually help you get a little bit more onto what's going on there. Now, most people are thinking that when you think blog, you basically think these huge walls of text. No, you don't. For some people, that's great. I mean, if you happen to be going on a rant that day and you decide to go six, 7,000 words, okay, really debate that. But the bottom line is, the blog is going to be able to do a lot more for you than just simply work with your SEO. It's also going to allow you to connect with readers because at that point, you're basically saying, hey, here's what I'm thinking. Here's what's going on in the comic. Here's what we're thinking about in the comic. And these are our future plans, and readers like that kind of thing. So not only are the blogs really great for your SEO, but they're also really great for connecting with your readers. They basically just allow your readers to a little bit into what you're doing. And they like that kind of thing. Readers like being in the loop. They like having the information because it makes them feel like they're part of the process. Yeah, it's a little on the vicarious side of the process, but it is still part of the process. And that's never a bad thing, especially if you're trying to drum up a little bit of business. You know, it's basically part of the old adage. Yeah, sometimes you don't want to, you just want people in on the process. You want to let them know what's going on. People are curious. Satisfying that curiosity is a good thing. Makes them happy, makes you happy because, hey, you got it off your chest and it's not a major secret. So, hey, we're good. You know? It actually acts as a nice little form of advertising for your comic. If you happen to have things that are going on in the comic you need to let people know about, you know, like you're changing your update schedule or you're quitting the comic or you're printing off books, hey, this is an excellent place to put all that information. So definitely, if you can create some sort of blog and actually keep updated on a regular basis, go for it and just simply have fun with it. You know, it's not something you have to keep as a mandatory homework exercise, but it is something you need to have. Even if it's just a real basic, hey, we've got a new page up, enjoy, you know. Like I said, anything you can do for the readers, anything you do for the search engines, is something you should be doing. So keep that in mind if you ever get to the point where you really hate doing your blog. And trust me, you are going to hit that point at some point. All right, so let's go back to the marketing for a sec. What we're basically looking at when it comes down to the big, nasty marketing plan is exactly how it is you're going to get people interested in your comic. This doesn't necessarily have to be ultra detailed or, you know, really scary. You just have to have some sort of plan. Now, obviously, you got the social media thing going on. Cool. We've covered that ad to an item. I'm just going to mention here because it's, well, part of your marketing. And, well, obviously, this is where it needs to be more mentioned if it has been mentioned before. You also need to look into ads. Some of these ads can be really cheap. Some of them can be really expensive. Figure out where you want to spend, what your budget is. And go for it. Have some fun here. You know? If you got a really great advertising campaign plan and you can afford it according to your budget, go for it. Yes, Facebook ads help. Google ads help. You know, there's a lot of other things you can do to basically drum up some ads. Definitely go for it. While you're doing this, you also might want to subject to things called indexes. What these are are basically sites that do nothing more than basically catalog things going on. 
you'll know, for example, that if I'm doing a podcast here, I'm going to basically figure out everybody online that basically does some sort of podcast index. You know, especially if they happen to do writing, especially if they're comics, especially if they're business. This is one of the reasons you can find web comics reviews and interviews anywhere online right now. You know, if you're having a problem finding WCRI, you're just not looking. These are various things you want to submit to. Figure out where they are. Again, you're looking at your top 100s, and there's a lot of them. They're your best comics out there. You know, Duck Web Comic actually does have some of these things listed. When you start looking at your web comics, start looking at places, the little links that basically allow you to vote. Those are also indexes. They do a little more than just simply, hey, act as you know, places where you can vote. They actually do have indexes, and those indexes are submitted to the search engines, and search engines love those. Remember what I said about search engines expressing their love? You noticing a common thing yet? And, of course, while you're out there, when you're submitting to the best of types, keep in mind that some of those do allow you to do voting incentives. This is something you're going to let your, have to let your artist in on because doing things like, you know, desktop wall cut, things are great. Um, if you're doing basically t-shirt designs that you're planning to have down in the future, this is a great place to preview them and possibly get a little bit of feedback. You know, if you're trying to basically do book cut marks, and I mean the actual things that you actually put into a book, these are great places. Yeah, if you just simply want trivia, hey, you know, anything that you can think of that would work as a voting incentive can basically be placed here, and that's a good thing for you. Because at that point, people are actually interested in seeing what you're actually up to doing and actually, you know, giving you actual votes for that kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, I know. This is one time you're allowed to buy votes. Take advantage of it. Um, and, of course, last but not least are basically figure out podcasts and blogs and do guest shot on those, you know? Basically talk to a podcast, say, hey, I've got a new comic coming up. Can I go on your show? I think I'd be a great guest. And... You know, obviously you're not going to be accepted every time, but it can be fun to do it. Again, go back into my podcast, look for basically interview basics, and keep that in mind. You should be doing a great interview. You do a great interview, you'll get more readers. So definitely check out the guest stuff. And it definitely applies to making guest blogs. You know, I don't care if you're doing an actual guest blog or if they basically send you out some questions, you answer the question and send it back, and then they put those on the site. That's cool, too. You know, anything you can do to get the word out that basically, hey, I've got this really great webcomic, come and check it out, is anything that you can encourage. So definitely go for it. So when it comes down to it, social media, indexes, guest stars, you know, there's blogs and podcasts, and definitely figure out some sort of ad campaign. This should all be part of your marketing plan and just have a little bit of fun with it. All right. Don't worry. We're almost there. Honest. Next thing you want to do is basically figure out your how you're getting paid on this. Now, the real basic stuff is just simply donation situations. We're looking at things like crowdsourcing. You know, that great Kickstarter campaign you want to go, the Indiegogo? That counts here. You know, you're obviously going to have to create some incentives for it, but that's just part of the thing. You want three or four tiers, figure out basically what those incentives are, how to basically get people interested in it, and just go for it. Crowdsourcing should, however, be something that's not necessarily something you're going to go right off the bat. You're going to need to warm up to that and have a little bit of fun with it. You also want to check out things like Patreon. Please check out ours, Two Sparrows, and support get that support going for your comic. Don't forget, also, that you can set up some sort of tip jar. PayPal, for example, has a great tip, tip jar button. Uh, the coffee site has one as well. And, of course, conveniently, there is a tip jar site. Little donation things, and they actually do help pay for some of the stuff. So, definitely look into those tip jar situations. And, of course, you can also offer advertising on the site. Some things like AdSense are pretty obvious, but, you know, if you basically, you've got a site on your, that you can actually have advertising on, figure out how big the advertising you're going to allow is, and then basically figure out how much the cost is going to be there. Don't get crazy. A couple of dollars a day is really debatable. You're looking at more of a 50 cents to a dollar a day until you get actually popular. As soon as you start getting popular, then hey, figure out what the market will bear and go for it. 
But, you know, just basically set it up. Crowdsourcing, Patreon, tip jars, and advertising are definitely going to be some of your best ways of making money right off the bat. And, of course, let's not forget about good old-fashioned merch. Your freebies, your books, you know, your clothing, tier awards, all this stuff that basically gets people really excited. You know, if you can come up with a really great clothing line, definitely go for it. But also try to figure out where you're going to eventually sell your books as well. Because eventually you're going to want to compile this stuff into some sort of trade paperback and get people to buy it. Amazon, Lulu are definitely going to be your friends here. You know, anywhere that offers some sort of print on demand. You're also going to be wanting to check out Zazzle and Cafe Press. Yeah, I know. You've got a lot of people that will tell you Tea Furry and Tea Spring. But what I'm basically looking at is stuff that gives you a wide variety of merchandise. That allows you to basically cater to specific crowds. And definitely Cafe Press and Zazzle definitely there. Uh, of course, if you happen to be able to have something that's a little bit more homemade, then definitely check out Etsy. I mean, it's a great site. It's specifically set up for those little things that are really cool. Like if you're doing stuffed animals, that sort of thing. Definitely sell those things off on Etsy. If you can, there are actual places that will allow you to print out card games. If you can actually develop a decent card game for your book. You know, don't get too crazy here. You don't want to have too, merchandise, too much merchandise right off the bat. And even if you do get to the point where you have a wildly successful comic... You don't want to have your design on everything. If for one thing, the catalog and that would just be ridiculous. Also, your customers would probably end up hating you unless it was a really, really cool design. So, definitely hold off on going crazy on the merch right off the bat, but at least have something out there. I don't care if it's just, like I said, a t-shirt and a cap. That's still something. If you can come up with something a little bit clever... For example, those little pins, because I love pins myself. I've got like, you know, a dozen plus of them for like different things. Just ask me about gravitation sometime. But the bottom line is pins also work, and they're easily available. And they're also really great for conventions. And if you do do conventions, really debate freebies. For imprint, for example, .com has some really great little things that are cheap, inexpensive, and you have absolutely no problem giving them away. Better yet, because they have the URL on it, they can lead people off to your comic wherever you want them to. So definitely, figure out some way of making money through the merch. Just have some fun with it and don't get too crazy. Alright, and when it comes down to it, that's the extreme basics of what you want. Oh, let me add one more to it before I forget. Conventions. If you're serious about conventions, make sure you have display items. I don't mean necessarily merchandise that happens to be stuff that you can do as a display model. No, no, no. What I'm looking at are things that allow you to put banners up, or the banners themselves, shelves, displays, that sort of thing. You can find a lot of those cheap online. It's not that big of a deal. But you're going to find that if you have those display cases set up and you can do them well, then that's something you can basically drag with you from convention to convention and actually have a little bit of fun with it every time you go there. Also, setting up a banner stand is not all that difficult. All you need is about 30 bucks worth of PVC, and you can set up an incredibly great little stand. You know, throw a $3 something you'd find it, you know, one of your print shops, and hey, you're good to go. You know, when you basically start doing your convention thing, keep in mind that if you can basically create a really nice banner, some really basically dis good displays, and have something actually on the table, you know, I don't care if it's a bunch of freebies. Great. That gets the word out. Excellent. If you can actually have some actual merchandise there, like books, your caps, your t-shirts, your pins, please, 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 your pins, you know, definitely go for it. Anything you can do to have a little, catch a little bit of money that actually makes that convention trip well worth it. So keep that in mind when you go to the conventions. They're not just there for you to dress up in funny critters. Have some fun with it in terms of the business sense as well. So, first off, like I said, this is going to be available on my Patreon page. Patreon.com slash Two Sparrows. You know, straight up, check it out. I'm going to basically have that document up and it should be up and you should be able to take advantage of it. And I'll even make sure it's available at a dollar tier. So, it's going to be available for pretty much everybody. But, when it comes down to it, 
you need to basically keep in mind that when you start setting up your business, you have to be serious about it. You have to figure out where all the hoops are, what all the paperwork is you have to deal with, and any advantages you can come up with as you go. Straight up, if you can find a mentor that can actually help you through all this stuff, definitely go for it. But this is definitely one of those times where you either need to get that mentor or you're just going to have to straight up pay for a lawyer. And you want to try to avoid paying for a lawyer if at all possible. They can get really expensive. They're worth it, don't get me wrong. But you're going to have a lot of people you're going to be paying for. I mean, you're definitely going to be wanting to pay for an accountant at some point. So when it comes down to it, just don't go at it halfway. Go at it 100%. Go at it hardcore. Because otherwise, you're not going to do as well being a business as you possibly can. That said, if you can, support the web this podcast by going off to patreon.com slash two sparrows. You're going to find some really great stuff there. You're going to find some mini casts there that actually go over some of the weirder stuff, but they're only like five, ten minutes long. You're going to find some documents there. You're going to find some edited, or sorry, you're going to find some unedited podcasts because there's been podcasts like Arlen Schumer that are just a little too long and King Daniel Taylor who just had a little too much extra language if you know what I mean. We actually do have uncensored versions of those podcasts available at the Patreon. So check it out. You know? And then, of course, like I said, they're there with the mini casts and a couple of transcripts. Also, check me out at Amazon.com. I just released two books. I've got my Sex Percussions webcomic that is now into an actual printed version. And I've actually got How to Create a Web... Sorry, How to Create a Comic Workbook. That's definitely worth checking out. Not only does it allow you to set up a business like we've been doing here, but it acts as a, basically a series Bible. You can have some really great pictures of everything that's in there, and you actually have your, also your outlines, your plots, all your characters' relationships to various other characters, and basically a couple of pages just for sec, just basically for free drawing. So definitely, the workbook is going to help your comic one hundred percent. Also, uh, check me out on YouTube. Web comics reviews and interviews is definitely available on YouTube. And we actually have created lists. We have definitely a lot of different lit playlist lists for a lot of different subjects. And it can actually be sort of interesting to go there. So definitely check us out at YouTube and subscribe. Please. That said, I hope this is helpful. If it has, let's talk again. Have a great day.